Hi, I'm Mark Neiman Ross, and welcome to this week's edition of Raspberry Pi Weekly. Every week, we explore the Raspberry Pi and share useful tips. Remote GPIO allows one Raspberry Pi to control the GPIO pins on another Raspberry Pi. It also allows a standard laptop to remotely control the GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi. There are ways to do this without remote GPIO, but you may have a specific need for this technology. So let me show you how to set up remote GPIO and how to make it work. Setting up a remote GPIO requires a couple of steps. There are different ways to do this. I'm going to show you the quickest. Before turning on the Raspberry Pi, build a simple LED circuit shown here. It's the identical circuit we built before. Connect one leg of the LED to ground on pin 39 and the other to GPIO 26, which is also known as Raspberry Pi board pin 37. If you need to check the polarity on the LED to make sure it'll light, move the wire from pin 39 to pin 1. This puts 3.3 volts DC through the LED and it should light up. If it doesn't, just rotate the two pins of the LED side to side. When you're done testing, move the LED back to pin 37. Be sure to be using the full desktop version of Raspbian, not Raspbian Lite. You'll know you're using the right version if your application menu has LibreOffice. You'll also need the IP address for this Raspberry Pi. From a terminal window on the Raspberry Pi, enter hostname-i. Be sure to use capital I, not lowercase i. Write the number down, in this case, 10.16.18.61. You'll need it in a minute. While you have this terminal window open, you'll need to enable PIGPIOD for one-time use. Enter sudo PIGPIOD. If you've already enabled PIGPIOD, as I have done, you may get a can't initialize PIGPIOD library. You're safe to ignore it. You'll need to do this each time you reboot the Raspberry Pi. There is also a way to set this up, so it will always be enabled. But for now, use this command each time you boot the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to do remote control of the Raspberry Pi from my Macintosh, and I'll need to enable remote GPIO on the Macintosh. Instructions for configuring a control machine whether it's Macintosh or Windows or Linux or Raspberry Pi, is found at this website. In my case, I'm controlling the remote GPIO from a Macintosh. I'll need to use the command pip3 install gpio0 pigpio. And now I'm going to close that. Now you're all set to run a Python script to control the remote GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. Open up a Python editor on the controlling machine and then open the Python script to control GPIO found in the exercise files folder. Now this is all standard Python code to control the GPIO but with three important changes. First is an additional import. You'll see that from gpio0.pins.pigpio import pygpio factory. This provides the Python script with instructions on communicating with an external set of GPIO pins. Second, you'll need to create a pin factory. And you'll see that below the imports where it says factory equals pi gpio factory and then a host number. This host number is where you specify the IP address of the target gpio or the target raspberry pi. In my case, 
you'll remember that I wrote down the numbers 10.16.18.61, and that's the host number I should be using. Third, when you specify an LED in that line where it says LED equals LED, pin 26, you can see comma, pin factory equals factory. This connects the controller code to the remote GPIO. Now run this Python code. This will cause the LED on the remote GPIO to blink on and off. With these three changes to the code, any standard Python code can be used to drive a remote GPIO. More complex remote GPIO examples and instructions can be found at the GPIO0 documentation. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Raspberry Pi Weekly. Be sure to join the LinkedIn group and check out previous episodes on LinkedIn Learning. I'll see you next week with more Raspberry Pi adventures.